Yo, what's up? What's up? What up? We're we, back. Are, we are back. Clark Brothers back yeah. again for another breakdown. This time we are breaking down season two, episode four of Winning Time, the rise yes. of the Laker dynasty. This is the full breakdown and full review. Right. Um, Yesterday you had our, uh, our quick thoughts. We talked about a few points. Now we'll just be a little more in depth about this episode and really kind of dig into what did this episode mean? Like at this point in the Lakers franchise and career, uh, we'll also, as we know, if you don't know, Heaven Hollywood is a lifelong Laker fan. And, yeah, you know, yeah. we could compare some notes to stuff that he remembered as opposed to what was put on the screen. Uh, and that's what we encourage you to do as well. Make sure you comment, like, coming through the door, smash the like button, comment below if you are a Laker fan. What do you remember about right. this this series that lines up with your with your memory? And we'll yeah, we'll talk absolutely. more about that, and we'll get right what into it. You, what did you hear? You know, what did you um, know and hear about the? Because this right here is covering the 1981-82 season. I mean, so how much about that? Especially if you're in LA, was you starting to hear some rumbles of? you know, trouble in River City, as they say, you know, so leave all that down in the comments below. We're going to jump into episode four and, you know, it pretty much picks up in exhibition season, exhibition season. This is going into, you know, the year after the Lakers spit the bit against, uh, hmm. I think it was Houston Rockets. Houston so, Rockets, yep. Coming now off of Magic's injury. The system. Yeah, right, Magic did get hurt. He yeah. came back. He probably came back a little too soon because he had to get himself in, you know, installed with the system. And as you can see, it 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 proved to be a big thing because he didn't have the energy nor the stamina to finish games. But now wow. it's a full year. He seems to be recovered now. And you know, Paul Westhead is running this system, so to speak. Quote unquote. And right, and and as at the beginning of the episode, it kind of takes up like where you said, and it's kind of showing you right now, Paul Westhead is starting to now gain, you know, I guess in his way, gaining self confidence, but really from our end, it seems like he's getting a little arrogant because he's right. proud of himself that the system it did prove to work because they did have a winning season. But it broke down and they lost in the in the first round. But the season was not bad. You know, they had a, a winning season with his system. And right. now, you know, he, it starts off with him looking for the, you know, Sports Illustrated or whatever. And, you know, they have a feature on the Lakers in there, although Larry Bird is on the cover. <laughs> so right. uh, they were a little mad about that. But he's just basking in his little arrogance and, uh, you know, kind of happy for himself, pat himself on the back. And he's and you can see the change in him. He's starting to party it up. And you say, this guy wasn't that type of guy, you know. But now you see him in the parties and he's dancing and he's dancing with chicks. And it's just, he's starting, the L.A. is starting to get to him. Yeah, that's what it is, basically. Yeah. So that La La Land, is, he's really starting to enter La La Land. So when you fast forward a little more than that, so it goes further on, basically highlighting the disconnect between Magic and his head coach, Paul Westhead, and also the disconnect between Westhead and Pat Riley, who is his assistant, was his yeah. number one right-hand man. Been there with him from the beginning when, yeah. when nobody be believed in Westhead, when everybody was just used to make fun of him. Mm -hmm. It was Pat Riley that was there saying, this guy's your coach, you need to listen to him. Yeah, And, you know, he ended up, he's saying, you know, trust with Riley by his side, they ended up winning that title the first year. Yeah. Now, like I said, Westhead's starting to loosen up a little bit more. He's starting to let it get to his head because he got him a title. Mm -hmm. Then last year, it makes it seems like he won the first round between him and Magic Johnson because – when Magic came back, Wes had to say we were on a winning streak. When he came back, we we still had, I believe we finished like second that year. 
mm-hmm. in the division. And, um, you know, but then Magic, we lost with him. So now here it is, the start of the, the, the next year. <clears throat> they, you know, they are um, seeing a lot of the headlines, you know, doubting mm-hmm. the Lakers. And then, you know, they're laughing at the team pitchers and the system and all this other yeah. stuff. He tries to make it more about the system and the system mm-hmm. he's running. And True. Magic Johnson, you know, from, from this, from the, when it comes on, Magic Johnson is, is not having fun. And that was the whole thing about Magic that I do remember. Back then, he said, I'm not having fun no more. When I stop mm-hmm. smiling, there's a problem. Right. So, th- you know, a main theme in this particular episode is the fact of it's kind of centered a little bit around Paul Westhead and how he's handling things. Um you know, and as you know, right out the gate, we have problems. You got uh, in the episode, we have to fact check it. But in the episode, uh, Red Arbag, who was the coach of Boston, uh, was the one who leaked because, you know, he was part of the, one of the committees of, in the NBA. So right. he was he had privy to that information and he leaked. Well, not even leaked it. He blurted it out to the press. Uh, right. uh, about the magic lifetime uh contract the 25 for 25 and uh he did that on purpose obviously to just bring a little more stress because he already saw that they were t- there was a lot of tension going on on that end right. so bring a little more stress to them so this whole episode is really just kind of the whole trickle down effect now the team knows that magic uh, about Magic's contract, they had to find out from the press. Trying and, to keep it on the low. Try, he was trying to keep it on the low. Jerry Buss is is very uh, Jerry Buss is is very uh, annoyed by the situation. So then we go, you know, uh, obviously. So everyone is annoyed. Magic's annoyed at the system. Uh, Westhead is annoyed at Magic not buying into the system. He's also annoyed that no one really respects him or trust him uh including jerry west uh bus is annoyed at the whole situation especially the press he doesn't want to look ridiculous and pat's annoyed with the job pat feels like almost like he wants to quit you know he's 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 annoyed right. with everything that's going on so it's really digging in this episode pat i really enjoy so stressed he had a one scene you saw he was wearing a neck brace he was mm-hmm. so stressed out so stressed out. So I mean, he's really, really going through it, and everyone is 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 upset. So moving right along, even you know, there's, there's just tension throughout the whole show. You know, yeah. Jerry Buss is trying to get his life back together. You know, he's about to marry Honey. You know, he wants to propose to Honey, which Jeannie doesn't seem too uh, happy with. You know, um, and. You know, he's just asking her to help him, you know, pick pick a ring and all this other stuff. And she's not too cool with that. But, you know, she comes around. But mainly, I think this episode is really about Westhead and how his system is just a disconnect. And it's a little bit about magic being, in my opinion, he was, if, if this, you know, he was being a little immature. I think it's more yeah, ma- it's magic. His age. Yeah, his age, you know, a little immature. Because even Pat Riley had to basically, you know, try to talk to so say, listen, dude, you if, if you you supposed to be that star, you supposed to get out there. Oh, he's like, oh, you're not questioning your question. What, I, what I'm doing, how I'm playing. He's like, no, but you are a star. You need to go out there and show you a star and stop being right. stop pouting. You know, so it, it's, it's, it's real interesting when you think about. You never, I never saw magic in that light, you know what I mean? So, right. it's it's a very interesting uh episode to kind of so see. Sidebar, they're saying that Red Albeck did not leak that information, mm-hmm. but they're not giving they're not saying who did do it. Mm. So, um, so, for, so, for now, as <laughs> of now, Red did it, Red did it. So, it was somebody from it. Boston, probably right, even Boston did it. Because they're not telling us, so they should be able to tell. If Red, if you can't tell us who did it, how do you know Red Auerbach didn't do it? Exactly. So, <laughs> you know I mean? 
Either way, it got out, and that's when hell, all they, hell broke loose. They, they come out to actually that season, um, you know, and again, you see a little bit of uh, this uh, this episode. You saw a little bit of you didn't see a lot of the home life on this episode. No. You didn't see a lot of Claire. I don't even know if they re- even she had a line in this um no. in this episode. Um, you saw where Honey is now. Like I said, he's gonna marry Honey. She's kind of like in the house now, and now she's starting to feel herself a little bit and feel as though she's got a little bit of authority around around Doc Buss's house. And that's starting to get on the sister's nerve, the brother's nerve. <clears throat> you know what I mean? So Jerry Buss has tension everywhere. He's got tension going on in his home life. He's got tension going on in the basketball court. Mm-hmm. Right? In you know, the media. He, right. In the media, the tension. You know, of course, him and our backs always been a rival. Yeah. And um, even though he tries actors or like he's joking with, Red, whenever Red leaves, he's like, I want to kick his, you know, you know, he's really yeah. serious. But he just don't want Red to know that he right. got him bothered. Right, exactly. He's trying to be unbothered. So, I mean, and then it goes into a montage of the Lakers losing and losing. And then it they start to pick it up. You know, they start off the season like, what was it, uh, two and four or something like that? They yeah. start the season two and four, but, but actually <laughs> another thing. About uh, about the season that they didn't make a big enough deal because I do remember this as well is <clears throat> they started talking to Kareem. Right. Yeah. They started talking. They 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 touched on it. We told Kareem and Kareem kind of even he kind of hinted that he might yeah. want to be yeah, traded to the Knicks. It was actually a bigger deal. <laughs> Um, okay. People were actually heard about. Kar- I remember that year, people were talking more about Kareem. No one actually knew that Magic wanted to be traded until he came out and said it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But um, just jumping ahead. But yeah, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Before the season even started, he was complaining that he might want to be traded to the Knicks. And that was uh, that was an accurate point. It was the Knicks too, and he was saying that he really can't see any other team that he would play for that he would you know trade to early, you know, before his contract was up. Yeah, but, and uh, I, I can imagine that. Yeah, they they kind of breezed past that in this, but as you said I can imagine that being a big deal that Kareem mm-hmm. actually mentioned a team that he would consider right. playing you for. Know, and, and remember, I was I'm in New York at the time, so that was the big thing. All the Knicks might be getting Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Yeah, because he's that's the only other team he would consider playing for. Right. And he kind of actually really kind of trashed the Lakers organization by saying that te- that that city seems to care about Care basketball about and their players. Basketball. A lot of people, I mean, and that's always been the knock on LA. A lot of people always felt as though LA people, they don't go to the basketball game because they love basketball. They go to the basketball game to be seen at the basketball game. Yeah. And so that's what they used to say. People in LA don't go to see a basketball game. They go they to go be seen at the basketball at game. At the basketball game. <laughs> so you know, if they lose, ah, oh, no big deal. I'm still rich. Let me going back to my <laughs> boat house. Right. Whatever. If we win, yeah, you know, cheering. Everybody, we're gonna be on the news tonight. I'll go home and watch myself on the news. You yeah. know, that's that's the was the old thing about and New York. You know, the Knicks fans, the Knicks when they they were crying when they lose. You know, they didn't like losing. New York teams didn't like losing. They always spent the money and did or use all their resources. So that is what um Kareem was going through in the yeah. beginning. Now the the big turning point in here is of course after they found out that Magic got the contract the, the that rubbed everybody on the team the wrong way, you know, and and the most calm guy of course as always is Michael Cooper, twenty one and he and even he was upset. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even he was like, you know, you got to understand why people are upset. You know, you're, everybody's grinding, busting, they're trying to find their way. And then here you are, the, the golden boy, third year, 
right. in the league and you get a lifetime Laker contract, they're yeah. not even giving that money to Kareem or what have you. So Yeah, and I, I think this episode... Go ahead. Yeah, the teammates, they were upset and magic. And, and um, like you mentioned, the quick thoughts, it wasn't not necessarily the money. Of course, the money had something to do with it. But um, it was, you know, his direct access to Bus. And it seemed like Bus gave him special treatment. He knew things about the team that other guys have to find out later on and stuff like that. And um, and magic to your to what you said was a little immature about it. He, it wasn't even like he's like, guys, I understand. Oh, you just mad because it ain't you. And who would turn down this money? He he just wasn't getting it. And so I don't think he was mature enough to get it. And that frustrated Jabbar a lot about magic. Right. And the this, the episode kind of comes to a climax at where they're playing the Utah Jazz in Salt Lake City. Uh, once again, uh, they end up winning by one another time. You know, they, the, most of their wins was they were eking them out by one, but they were yeah. wins. And uh, Magic made it like another move or something like that that he wasn't supposed to do. But they still ended up winning. And then that was when it all came to a head because Wes had, you know, basically Magic basically turned his back on the team. Very yeah. un-Magic like, you know, not the we urban really magic that we know. He, he he wasn't even coming into the huddles. He turned his back on the team and almost walked out on the team. They uh finally, even though they got the win, Westhead, you know, and him are bumping heads in the in the hallway, not even in the locker room, in the right. tunnel. He pulls them into like this closet, and they they have at it, and the media is waiting for both of them outside the closet. Yeah. So they, they know exactly that this is not a good thing. And, uh, you know, Westhead just kind of tells him, listen, you're going to do it my way or you're going to sit on the bench, period. Right. And he's like, well, you might as well sit me already. Well, no, I'm going to sit you because it's my decision. I'm going to play you. because my. So once again, Westhead is trying to – it just boils over he's so bad. Yeah, he's that, trying yeah. to hold his will again. Right. It boils over so bad that Magic doesn't even want to take the team bus home with them, uh, you know. And it just it, – it it at this point, it boils over to Jerry West – I mean, I'm sorry, to Jerry Buss again. You know, now Magic goes to see him. Exactly what they thought he was going to do. Yeah. Magic go, <laughs> goes there and sees him. You know, and uh, basically says to him, hey, you know, this guy, blah, blah, blah. Now, Jerry, Jerry Buss is trying to be diplomatic. He's like, listen, I put a lot of money in this guy. We got to at least give him a chance. We can't fire him, which he, you know, he had the, the talk with West early in the episode. We can't right. fire this guy six games in. Like, you know, we got midseason. We're not changing coaches again. Like, like we're we going to, exactly yeah, like we're going to try it. Right. So. I mean, this this is where the, the the show comes to a climax, and and this is where, really, to be honest with you guys, this is the the main topic of this episode. You know, um, this is the fall of Paul Wesley. <laughs> right. Funny, funny thing is, at that point in time, he he ends up when when, Ma when Magic says. When Magic says he, um, I'm, I'm not going to jump ahead episodes, but Magic basically it basically ends with Magic saying, "Yeah, I want to be traded. Want to be traded," which you we know, talked about was a big I'm deal, of course. Want to be traded? I'm not happy. I'm not having fun. I want to be traded, and that's pretty much how the episode ends, and you know it sets us up for next episode next week. You know they're going to be you know still going into I think next week. According to the the preview, uh, I think that's when Paul Westhead gets fired. But okay. but yet they still I don't know if they na just named Pat interim coach like they still didn't have a coach. Mm -hmm. So Pat probably got it by default, and uh, you know. But at the same time, it looked like they were still looking for a new head coach. You know, right. Pat probably had to prove himself. They weren't, they weren't really sure about what Pat was going to do because they wanted to see. They're going to want to see if Pat is running the same thing that that um mm -hmm. Wes is running. Yeah. So, so 
we'll I mean, that next week. Yeah, we'll get that next we'll week. Exactly. I just want to say expect. before we end it tonight, just on your thoughts and, you know, as a, a lifelong Laker fan, sports fan itself, how was your what what in this episode did you find out that you didn't know or may have surprised um, you? Yeah, it it was a, a surprise to me that um that Kareem um asked for a trade early that season. It didn't I mean I I didn't really realize. I knew that that a season I thought it was the following season that he asked for a trade, but then this was the episode that I found out um that um he asked for a trade. This and and also what I, but since I did know that, I just wasn't sure the years. I did not know that Jack McKinney told Paul Westhead he was going to expose him. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I totally forgot that Jack McKinney was still coaching, coaching. in the NBA after that. Right. So I didn't know if they had a dinner and he sat down and told him those things or whatever. Um, that was pretty much the only things I didn't know. What about? Uh, from all the things that you've heard in basketball, like I said, you're not a mm-hmm. Laker fan, but I mean, you're, you're not a lifelong Laker fan. I'm not a lifelong fan. I mean, I root for the Laker Lakers, fan. but I wasn't a lifelong Laker fan like like right. you were. I mean, I just I'm I'm enjoying Something this that really series. Surprised you is really just probably Magic's. Yeah, Magic's Magic's behavior surprises me because I only know I only know smiling magic you know uh that's the only one that I I didn't know I wasn't watching the Lakers when magic first came into the league and I I can see the immaturity but that's really what's surprised me in this series and I just want to say uh and all y'all comment down below I'm really enjoying this series, despite what some people are saying about it. People want to try to pin it like it's not real. I, I, they, they've had enough facts for me. Mm-hmm. You know, when, yeah. when you do these type of shows, you only care about it being enough facts, where it's just not a bunch of fibs and a bunch of made up stuff. That is not how it is. People want it to be like, want, want people to think like, oh, this is just so far off. No, it ain't. It is not as a lifelong Laker fan, even in New York, most of these things happened that they are portraying. Of yeah. course, it's never going to be everything. It's Hollywood, but yeah. most of the things they're portraying is correct. Yeah, I, I I agree. So, with that being said, I want you guys to comment down below. Tell me, are you enjoying this series? I think the acting is be is doing well. I think they're portraying these people yeah, probably yeah. the best of their ability. Um, I think they're doing it pretty well, especially uh, Quincy Isaiah. I think he's doing a phenomenal job as Magic Johnson. Yeah, just like he's definitely convincing me that he's Magic. Yeah, I'm do- he's doing a phenomenal job. The ones that stuck out always stood out to me, and there's a few of them. Uh, you know him, uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, the guy, the gentleman playing Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Yeah. I mean, I think he's doing a very he, he's really captured that that Norm Nixon. That's his yeah, real son. Norm Nixon, that's his son, right? That's Devon yeah. Nixon. Kareem, I didn't mean to cut you off. He's capturing the you the know the, the mystique, the essence and mystique. Yes, of the mystique, the essence, the chi of Kareem. You know what I'm saying? So that I really think he's doing a good job at uh, you know, they're all doing very good job acting. I don't know. Some of the guys I wouldn't be able to compare to, but the ones that I do know, Magic Johnson, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, these guys are doing, Pat Riley, you know, they're all doing, you know, Adrian Brody's doing a, a great job uh, playing Pat Riley. So I look forward to the to the next episode. I hate that it have to wait a whole week for it, but next week we will do our, you know, tune in here next week. We will definitely do our quick thoughts at the uh, by the end of the show, after the show's over, maybe no later than an hour later, you'll find our quick thoughts. You come back, check that out, and then Monday, come on back and check out our full review on the episode. So yep. this episode was really about uh, structure and the fall of the structure, and it's a new world. So we'll catch y'all next week. Thank y'all for listening and joining in. Make sure you smash the like button. Make sure you comment below and share it with your friends. 
Until next time, this is Wes Clark and Heaven yes. Clark, yes. and we will get with y'all next week. Peace. Peace. Peace.